my friends. I'm Glacier Rain. Welcome to my channel. So this is for the month of June, and I'm pretty excited about the month of June because I know these energies are really big and they are speeding up. So I'm going to talk about several different things today, and I want to start out talking about timeline imprinting. So we know that as human beings, we have the power to create, right? And so we're living in timelines. So that's, you know, movement through time and space, and we can shift different timelines. And each timeline is a little bit different than the one next to it. And we've been making timeline jumps um, over the past several years in an attempt to move into this new earth reality. So with the timeline imprinting, each of us has a say in how our personal timeline develops and progresses, and that impacts the collective timelines, right? So I'm sure you've noticed at different times you can, um, well, the Mandela effect is an example of, of the timelines and the different timelines, right? We've had timeline convergence lately, which is um, where you can have people remembering different versions of the same reality. So that's where the timelines are collapsing and converging into the primary timelines. Now, with the primary timelines, we know that there's the ascension and there's the descension. Most people are going to be on the ascension timeline. Um, and if you're listening to this, then you're on the ascension timeline already, or you wouldn't even be interested in ascension. So the people who are on the descension timeline are the people who have no idea what ascension is. And they're basically... Um, not being good people, you know, they're not being good to others. They are very services self oriented and willing to do evil things. So, and you know, we've all at different times been very selfish and serving ourselves, but a lot of times that's when we are learning about what that does, you know, how that impacts the people around us and the collective. So, it's not right or wrong to serve yourself, you know, but. If you start hurting everybody around you or causing death or disease or causing, you know, famine or different things like that, then, you know, obviously that's somebody that's not really working for the collective and is working against the collective. Now, being service oriented is a very beautiful thing. And that's really when you're allowing the source energy to move through you into this world. And interestingly, that is also when you're at your best. That's when you feel your best, you look your best, you're being your best. Now, service oriented doesn't mean self sacrifice. Okay, that's not your best. That's not good for you or anybody else. You can't pour from an empty cup. So with the timeline imprinting, I want to bring in more joy and less fear because if the timelines are made of whatever we are focused on, it would make the most sense to focus on the things that bring us the greatest joy, right? And that doesn't mean pretend that things aren't happening. You know, you can look at what's happening and still focus on things that make you feel joyful, okay? Sometimes we have to take the trash out. Sometimes we have to do the dishes and do the laundry. And that's not what brings us the greatest joy. However, having a clean house, clean dishes, and the house not smelling like trash does bring us joy. So you can kind of look at that and understand what I'm getting at here. With the timeline imprinting, we have an equal say. So each of us is putting in our vote for how the timelines turn out. Now, in order to imprint a timeline, how, how do we even imprint these timelines? Well, we do it naturally. We're wired or geared for it. So imprinting only requires thoughts and feelings being expressed. So timeline imprinting can be something like watching a scary movie and feeling about it and seeing it visually. So you've got an image of it, right? And then you're feeling about it. And then you're expressing that out into the field around you. So we're connected into this quantum field, all of us are. And that quantum field is reading everybody's expression and assembling it itself or assembling things into matter from energy into matter through our direction. So we've got this situation in the world right now that is pretty, uh, well, it's, bringing up a lot of fear for people. It's bringing up a lot of anger, division, separation, aggravation, 
Um, people are experiencing disease and mostly people are experiencing confusion around what the heck is actually going on and what is the best choice to make. We have been groomed to follow the herd. Okay. That's why you see if somebody doesn't fit in, they kind of um, get picked on or things like that, right? Well, this has all been done to hmm, kind of get everybody used to going along with the status quo. Now, we tend to look at others and um, try to see how we fit with others, right? Because, well, we are community beings. We want to be part of a community. And if you're thinking in past terms with like survival, you know, to be outcast from the group could mean that you don't survive. Now, we're not even living in a world right now that that applies so much, you know, that would be more of like nomadic living, tribal living or hunter gatherer living that that type of stuff, right? You you need to be part of this group to be protected because you're out there in the elements, you're living in more in a natural setting, even if you're, you know, building homes out of what is around you, you don't have a grocery store or all of that. Or maybe there's a, a, you know, some type of humble little store. But these days, that's not really that applicable because we have all these systems of distribution set up. However, I, I recognize that the same programming is still going, right? So when somebody doesn't fit in, they get targeted as an outcast, they get outcast, right? And in the indigos and star seeds know all about feeling outcast. So when we're imprinting the timelines, though, it's very important to not just go along with the status quo. It's your vote. What do you want the future to look like? Do you want the future to be joyful where you have freedom to be creative and be who you are and still be accepted? Or do you want the future to be controlled and dominated and you have to check the box to decide what you want? Do you want to be a doctor? Do you want to be a lawyer? Do you want to be this or that? You know what I'm getting at here. So it's not that it's bad to fit in, you know, it's just that we have to really look at what's being done to get us to imprint the timelines with a certain reality. So beliefs are part of your vibrational expression. And whatever beliefs you have going, you're inputting that as your vote on a daily basis, whether you recognize that or not. Some of our beliefs are subconscious. They're in our subconscious, right? So we don't even realize that's what we believe until we start asking questions of ourselves. Why do I feel this way? Why do I believe that? Why do I think that's right or wrong? And then you start to discover that it might not even be your set of beliefs that is guiding or driving your vote in the timelines. So I'm going to ask you this. What brings you the greatest joy? When are you at your best? What makes you feel the most happy you could possibly feel, the happiest? And how can you move toward that today? What steps can you take today that can lead you to greater joy? Do you need to forgive yourself? Do you need to forgive others? Do you need to ask more questions? Do you need to turn off the TV? Do you need to turn off the social media? You know, sometimes when we look at what is, we start creating more of what is. And when we look at what can be, we start creating what can be. So your now moment is really the moment of power. And I know I say this a lot, but I'm going to reiterate it again. We're living in this now moment, which is a culmination of the past, present and future. This experience that you see crystallized in front of you, when you look around, you see a material world. But it first started in energy. And that energy was based in your consciousness and the collective consciousness, right? So it started with thoughts. It started with the consciousness level. And then it came into form. So the consciousness level that we were all at as a collective in the past is why we are experiencing things the way that we are today. And also in this present moment of our present experience of the past creation, we are imprinting our future timelines. 
So the now moment is the only moment that you really have. And we have a series of them, you know, (laughs) that's a contradiction in itself. But you know what I'm saying here. So what you focus on now really matters. And not just what you focus on, but how you feel about it. You know, so if you look out at this global situation we're dealing with, you can look at it through any filter that you would like to. I like to look at it through a filter of hope and through a filter of trust. I know that we're going to get through this. Actually, I do know we're going to get through this because I can see a bit into the future timelines. So we do get through this, right? And we have divine alignment and divine timing. So let's talk a little bit about divine timing now. When people say divine timing, (laughs) often it it creates a lot of frustration because we want what we want. We want it now. We don't want some other time. And we certainly don't want somebody else to determine when we can have what we want, right? So divine timing has nothing to do with somebody withholding something from you, like the God source saying, nope, you're not ready. You can't have it yet. It's not about that. It's really about your vibrational expression, and the readiness for you to receive whatever it is you're asking for, whether it be an experience or um, companionship or love or a, a house or a car or a child or whatever it may be, right? And sometimes we have a different path in front of us than what our ego has led us to believe. What we see in front of us may not be what is actually our greatest path, right? So growing up, you may have been told certain things that shaped your idea about who you are and what you are lined up with, you know, deep down inside, you have an inner drive that is all you. But if unless you're getting into the depth of who you are and asking these questions, you can have filters that are overlaid on top of that, right? So that's where you ask yourself, well, what do I want? What do I want in this life? And am I living somebody else's way of being? Often we look at our parents when we're children and because we're, we're kind of a blank slate at that point, we look at the people around us and we find role models. And if it's not our parents, it may be a teacher or a religious leader or an aunt or uncle or even a friend, right? So when we look at that, you can ask yourself, are my aspects and my choices and my desires mine? Or is this something shaped from my childhood? And really start to get clear about what is authentically you. Because whatever is authentically you is what is actually going to lead you to the greatest joy and lead you to your greatest expression. So you know that question when we grow up, people say, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you're like, uh, well, I'm eight years old. Let's see. I want to be a fireman, I guess guess because I know that that's a job, right? Or I want to be a teacher. Um, growing up for me, if anybody ever asked me, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? Do you, do you want to be somebody that can read timelines and that can read energy and can help people heal? I would have probably said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I want to be a doctor, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Or um, I want to be a unicorn. But you know, really anything that you want to do is a possibility. If you can think about it, you can create it. Now that it may seem like there are a lot of things in the way and there may be, but really when you step into your ability to create and imprint your timeline, that's exactly what you will start to do. Now, we've talked before on this channel about the idea of regurgitation creation That means looking at what is and creating more of it. That also means looking at other people. Like, um, for example, if you have a TV show that you really identify with one of the characters, you might start creating a life that kind of matches that character. So you really do need to be careful of what you allow into your mind and into your consciousness. So if, you know, when I was studying NLP, I realized um, that there was a part of it that really stood out for me, and I used it with my children a lot, and that is storytelling. And this is how movies and TV shows and things come into play here. 
So with storytelling, you're always going to identify with one or more of the characters. There may be multiple characters that you feel like you are part of. So say there's seven, seven characters and each of them has a different quality that you like, you will start to mimic that quality. And then if one of the characters has multiple qualities that you identify with or you would like to be, you will start to identify with that character as that character. And then you'll start to exhibit those behaviors. You know, it's called modeling. So you model another person's behaviors and we do this naturally or we can also do it with intention. So this is why they say be careful about who you allow around you because you become like the top five people in your life. And that goes back to being a community-based being and we're not actually separate. We're all connected by that quantum field. And when you move up through the dimensions, we're all one anyways. Here we're having the perspective of separation, right? But we're not actually separate. We're all connected. And in the unity consciousness template, we start to have things like telepathy and empathy and things like that, right? So a lot of people are noticing telepathy and empathy. And with telepathy, you may or may not hear the person's words like clairaudiently, right? But you'll feel it and you'll know it. You can just tell what somebody is thinking next to you. It's in their field. Sometimes I hear it. I have telepathy. So sometimes I'll hear it and I'll kind of look over, especially with strangers. I'll look at them when they're thinking the thought. It's in their field. It's not, it's not an invasion of their mind. Everything you think is in your consciousness and your consciousness is not uh, limited or held within your, within your head, right? Your brain is in your head, but your consciousness is all around you. All of us have this field of consciousness, right? And so when you start to get more sensitive, you pick up on what is in other people's fields. This is part of being an empath right? You have strong empathy. You can feel other people's feelings. You can feel their bodies. I have the ability in my sessions. I feel what's going on in other people's bodies. I feel what's going on in their energy body. Whatever work I'm doing, I can feel how it's, um, in how it's moving in their body. So this is something that we're all going to be shifting into. It's not that I'm you know, this only person that can do this or something, you, all of you can do this too. It's just a matter of developing it. And, um, I started developing my psychic abilities at 12 years old. Uh, I mean, I, I purposely intentionally started then. And so these are all skills that you will be able to develop. And many of you have already been developing them. So you have clear cognizance. That's just that clear knowing. People ask you, how do you know that? Well, you say, I'm not sure. I just know. I just have this knowing. Well, this is part of being multidimensional. If you think about being multidimensional, we have several layers to our aura and or um, our biofield, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it. Um, people kind of say aura and they think it's too woo woo, but you call it biofield and suddenly they think it's scientific, right? Either way, science and spirituality are my two favorite things. So we can use both terms here. Now, if you look at the different layers in your aura, each of one, each one is connected into a different dimension. And so when you're going multidimensional, that means you have access to more dimensions of yourself, but you also have access to more dimensions of others. And this doesn't happen from um, some, you know, something outside of you. This is something you develop, right? This, like I said, this is about divine alignment and divine timing, meaning your readiness to be in that. So if somebody is going to do something um, very selfish and dark, they won't access those abilities. If you're a human being, you're not going to access those abilities because you would have a fail safe in plan so that you won't hurt others. If you hurt others on purpose, you're actually creating really negative karma and you keep yourself looping with people like that. So everything we do aligns us with our experiences but it doesn't happen instantaneously. And that's why a lot of us, um, you know, throughout our lives 
have made mistakes or thought we got away with something. And then later we're like, it could be 10 years later. We're like, dang, now I know how that person felt or especially with parents. You know, we do this with parents when we have the realization that uh, maybe they were doing their best and life is harder than we thought it was going to be when we were viewing them from a child's perspective. So, you know, joy will lead you to the greatest abundance and fear will lead you away from abundance. So when we're looking at joy, that's that's felt more in the the heart and the throat and the third eye and the crown. And it can be felt in, in multiple layers of your being. But fear is felt in the root chakra. You, you know, when you're like your heart drops, when you hear bad news, you move into like fear and sadness and possibly even things like guilt, shame, blame, which are in the lower chakras, right? And then even when you're, when you feel the need to fight or defend yourself, you feel it in your stomach. You don't feel it in your heart. So you're dropping into those lower chakras and those lower chakras are the survival centers, right? Those are very much like the animal centers. And um, by animal centers, what I mean is animals in the wild are primarily focused on survival, you know, and actually a lot of them are focused on bonding too. If you take the time to watch them, they, they play with their young and they play with each other. Um, animals are actually pretty advanced beings. Uh, they don't get caught up in a lot of the drama that we do. But either way, when you're in a state of fear, your life stops working and your body starts breaking down. And you can look at our situation in the world and become very fearful about what is being shared and told and spread, right? And that's why I say, you know, more joy, less fear, because if you're in a state of fear, you become susceptible to illness. If you're in a state of joy, you're much less susceptible to illness. And, you know, fear leads to scarcity and disease and the creation of negative experiences. It puts you in divine alignment with fearful things, right? And it's not, it's not that you can't shift it. But when you practice something for a very long time, it becomes almost automatic. So that's what, what I call being in the autopilot. So when you think a thought so many times, your conscious mind is like, well, I don't need to think this every single day. I'm going to hand it to the subconscious mind who is going to automatically put it into the program so it just happens. This is why you can grow up in a poor family and a family with, you know, n not a lot of finances or resources. And then that becomes your expectation in the future. And it's not that you have to be that way or that you're destined to be that way, but it is that you were programmed that way. That is your programming. And so we have to move out of our fear programming, right? And if you're watching the news, <laughs> <laughs> Good luck getting out of the fear programming because that is what they are pushing most of the time, right? Things that trigger you, things that get an emotional response out of you. And it's usually not a positive one. If there was positive news channels where all they do is talk about all the wonderful things that are happening because there are many more wonderful things happening than there are bad things happening. I can guarantee you that if there were more bad things happening, this world would already be broken down. And instead, it's not. It's recreating itself, you know. So your thoughts determine your direction in life. They determine your direction in every moment. So the quality of your thoughts in the morning determine your emotions throughout the day. And they determine your experience throughout the day. So yesterday I woke up and I've actually been dreaming again lately, which has been amazing. I haven't had dreams for a very long time and I've been having so many adventures in my dreams lately. Really fun. But I woke up and I kind of went into this fearful thinking, um, you know, just all these things. Like I feel like I'm a little bit behind. I'm in school full time and, and I have my Patreon and then I have my group healing and I do meditations for Bliss Spot and you know, and then YouTube. <laughs> and then, of course, I work full time too. And so 
I woke up and was just kind of like, oh, I need to get up right now and get all of this stuff done. And my higher self said, relax. You need to set the tone for the day. Watch your thoughts. And I, at this point, my higher self is a voice that is always on. It's always there. And, and all of you can develop that too. And actually, I'll be teaching a bit about that um, this month in my Patreon um, Q&A. And then also, I'll do a little class too, if you're interested in that. And I will um, let everyone know wh when that class is ready. But, but determining what your thoughts are in the morning. So if you wake up, well, number one, if you go to sleep with fearful thoughts or negative thoughts, which I did the night before, I thought, oh, I have so much to do tomorrow, <laughs> which I love everything that I do. I don't like feeling behind, though, or feeling like I'm not um, delivering what I said I would or what I would like to be delivering, um, sharing with the world. So if you go to sleep and you're thinking about something negative or fearful or you're angry, you pick back up in the morning in that same state of being. So it's pretty important to watch your thoughts before you go to bed. And then if you wake up and you start out with those negative thoughts, do whatever you can to shift it. And I love the open-ended questions. What would it be like if I felt great right now? What would it feel like if every bit of my work was done and I was 100% caught up? I'll tell you what, to me, that feels amazing in my body. I just, even just saying that right now, I felt my body relax and my heart got lighter and so you have the power to shift your emotions. You have the power to shift your focus. And you have the power to bring more joy into your life. And when you bring more joy into your life, you're being more of who you truly are. And that's a benefit to the entire world. So therefore, you're bringing more joy into the entire world just by doing that little bit of work with yourself. So... I want to talk a little bit before I get out of control here, because I'm trying to just make these videos 30 minutes only. I want to talk about some of the symptoms that we're going to have in <laughs> the month of June. So we're going to have, um, during this month, the accelerated light integration. We are having the high frequencies come in. These high energies, there's such high energies that are coming in. And this is going to shift the collective consciousness. This is the big awakening that I was talking about. The global awakening that is happening. Everybody's being given light codes and light code activations in order to wake up and go through their ascension process. We're not trying, nobody's trying to be left behind and nobody's trying to leave anybody behind, right? This is an all inclusive thing, you know? All your needs will be met and everybody's invited. And so it's all about what you will allow, though. What, what are you willing to receive? What are you willing to believe? And what beliefs do you have now that are contrary to what you want? But now to the symptoms. So vertigo and dizziness, lightheadedness, a lot of it. So when you're talking about a shift in consciousness, you're exchanging old energies for new energies. So you can imagine what that feels like in your energy field. And we're starting to access greater levels of our own selves in our multidimensional awareness. So the dizziness, the um, pressure in the head, all of that has to do with a shift in consciousness. Now your, your brain is doing its best to process information and it's doing great. I'm sure all of, all of you are doing great with this. So having epiphanies is part of that. An epiphany is when you just suddenly have this knowing and awakening in something, or you're able to suddenly get it. It clicks into place and you understand it. Like, I know what they're talking about now, that type of thing. Like, oh, I see it. Oh, I get it now. That's the epiphanies that we're going to start having. It, it can feel really amazing when you have an epiphany because suddenly something makes sense that didn't make sense before. So we're going to see this in a lot of people. So people, <laughs> people that you've talked to before about the ascension might come talking to you and be like, hey, have you heard about this? And make sure that you receive, instead of being like, 
duh, I told you about that like two years ago and you just ignored me. They weren't ready to receive it then and they're ready to talk about it now. If people come to you excited about the ascension, do your best to keep that excitement going because excitement opens doors. It really does. And nobody likes to feel stupid or like they've been missing something. So more joy, less fear, (laughs) more excitement. And, um, you know, be open to talking with people that before said, oh, you're wrong. I don't believe you or whatever. Even if they don't give you an apology, you know, be open. So we're also going to be noticing that the bodies are going through a tremendous shift to hold this amount of light. So when we shift our dimensional awareness, that means we have to shift our vibrational expression. Now, when we vibrate faster and at higher um, levels, our body has to shift. We have to shift what we've been doing, right? So we're shifting our density. And, and that by density, I don't mean the different, um, you know, dimensions that make up a density, right? First density is first, second, and third dimension. And you go all the way up to 15th dimension. We have five densities here. But that's not the density I'm talking about. I'm talking about um, the density of matter here. So we've got, um, we're lightening up. (laughs) We're literally enlightening. So as this um, energy exchange and transformation takes place, we have to shift what we're eating. The food that you ate before might start to make you feel like poo. You might just, you know, like, let's say you used to love popcorn and now you try to eat popcorn. You're like, I feel so sick after I eat popcorn now. Your body might be done with grains. You might not want that anymore. It might be too low for you. Or if you had a candy bar before and you're like, oh, this candy bar is wonderful. And now you eat it and you're like, oh, that was so sweet. And it makes me feel sick. I don't feel good. Honor your body. And it might be that before you didn't have a candy bar and, and you've, you know, now you do, uh, you really want it and you feel fine. Trust what your body is telling you. You can trust what your body's telling you if you tune into it because it's going to let you know. If you eat something and then you feel sluggish and you feel tired or you get a little bit of a headache or you start getting itchy, those are all indications that you ate something that your body is not in alignment with. And sometimes we need to give our body a break with a fast. So if you haven't done that in a while, go ahead and look into doing that. There are certain ways to do fasts, okay? It's not a matter of just like, I'm going to go out to an all-you-can-eat buffet today and then I'll fast tomorrow. That's really not what I'm talking about. To fast, you know, there are certain procedures to do it safely to where it's gentle on the body and not shocking and harsh. So do look into that if you're interested. So we're also going to need extra sleep. So that means fatigue and exhaustion. And what do we do when we're tired and we still feel like we need to perform? We reach for caffeine usually. So... Caffeine can really throw the body off and that can contribute to lightheadedness. And it's also very addicting. Now, I drink caffeine sometimes um, and I'm not going to say don't do it, but notice how it feels in your body. And if your body's asking for rest and you have the opportunity to rest, give it that rest because that's when you can integrate at an accelerated rate and make the transformation that is available to you faster. You can go through it at a faster pace if you allow it to organically happen. Now, if say your body wants to take a 20 minute nap, but instead you have a double shot espresso, you didn't give your body the chance to integrate the light that it wanted to. And instead you pushed it to go harder. If you think of your body as your best friend and your best friend was like, I'm really tired. I need to lay down for just, can you please give me 20 minutes? Would you say to your friend, like, heck no, drink this coffee and keep going, you know, because especially if it makes your friend feel sick, would you? Probably not. You'd probably have more respect because you love your friend. You'd say, oh, you don't feel well. Hey, yeah, take 20 minutes. Go ahead. Rest. I've got this. I'll wait. And so treat your body as your best friend. Because it really is your best friend. It's the one making all of this possible. Everything that you've ever done 
in this world is because your body partnered with you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have done it. You wouldn't have had the opportunity to be in physical form. You would have never tasted anything. You would have never kissed anybody. You would have never had sex. You would have never gone on vacation. You would have never watched the birds or clouds or felt the wind or felt the warmth of a fire or a nice hot bath. So think about the experiences that your body is providing for you and treat it accordingly. You, you want this body on your side, you know. It's your partner through this ascension process. So give it what it needs because if you don't, you're going to move through it in a miserable way most likely and, and your body will break down without the proper care. So more joy, less fear in that area too because your body responds to joy and heals very rapidly in the energy of joy. In fact, it doesn't get sick. If you were to constantly be in a state of joy and curiosity, your body would never get sick. You could expose it to any, anything and it would never get sick. So, um, another thing is that you are going to become very thirsty. So extra water. Now don't go overboard because there is such thing as drinking too much water and you don't want to stress your kidneys out, but you do want to stay hydrated and, uh, tap water, depending on where you live, probably the tap water is not going to be very good for you because there's a lot of toxins put in tap water. Um, plus it's pushed through pipes. By the time it comes out of that tap, it is dead. So getting fresh spring water or, um, you know, some type of filtration is good too. And feel that out, you know, whatever works for you, whatever your preference is and your budget is for filtered water, you know, it, you know what to do in that area. So the water though, if you think about if you're hydrated, your cells can communicate a lot better. Your body has what it needs to flush the toxins out and to build new cells. You know, your cells are constantly turning over and you're creating new cells all the time, 24-7. And so giving your body the fuel that it needs, um, you know, my higher self told me this multiple times, water is the new coffee, because I used to have a raging coffee addiction. I love coffee. I live in a very cold environment that it's literally June and 50 degrees out. I'm almost crying today over it, but that's a different story. So I loved coffee so much, but it started making me feel really sick. And it just wasn't what my body needed. And I even tried decaf and that I still have decaf and I still have a little bit of caffeine sometimes because I do love it. I like how it feels. But really, um, if I try to have a regular caffeine habit now, I feel sick. And when I have plenty of water and I stay hydrated, I actually feel really good. I feel energized. And, um, you know, something that I'm doing right now and certainly do the research on this before just implementing it is to drink a little bit of food grade hydrogen peroxide in my water. Very, very little because it can cause rapid detoxing. Um, but is that, that can bring extra oxygen into your body and help to purify your body, detoxify your body and help you feel a lot better. So if there's pathogens in your body, which more than likely there is, um, then the food grade hydrogen peroxide can be of great benefit for you. So go ahead and look into that if you're interested. Gosh, this is starting to get way too long here. So um, another thing, and I'll wrap this up at the end, and then the rest of this video will be on my Patreon channel if you'd like to get it there. But um, people are going to start having memories of past lives or multidimensional selves. So in the past life regression sessions that I've been doing with people, we're starting to go into multidimensional e existences. So off planet, uh, I, you know, not even this dimension, not even third dimension. So it's been really interesting to, to be seeing this work and doing this work with people and, and then seeing, of course, the past lives. Those are always very fascinating to see how they tie into this one. And really time is simultaneous. So I could say simultaneous lives, but it's easier to say past because we're, we're having a linear expression. So with the, um, the memories of these, this is part of recovering your multidimensional self and, um, kind of activating your multidimensional template. 
So you exist in more than one dimension at a time. This is just where your primary point of consciousness is oriented at the moment. But you may start to get memories of different lifetimes um, and different uh, dimensional experiences. Before I wrap this up, there are such things as holographic inserts or mind slides. So it's really good to step into your sovereignty or, you know, if you receive images, a holographic insert is an image or kind of like a movie that is falsely put there. It's, it, it was created kind of like a DVD put in a DVD player. It plays whatever's put in there, right? And this usually will come in in the form of like the ringing in the ears, which really isn't in the ears. It's, it's in the brain, but it kind of, it registers as like a ringing in the ears, and that can be a holographic insert being put in, or um, I call them mind viruses, or frequency programs is another term I use for them. So, you know, if you see stuff, don't be too alarmed. Um, see how it fits, see how it feels in your body. You know, if you recall a past life or a multidimensional life or a multidimensional expression, um, you know, really see how it resonates and don't buy into you know, the whole, uh, being uh, some, you know, famous ascended master or something like that. Okay. Just please don't buy into that stuff. It's not that you're not on some level, but that is a doorway that's being used by a lot of these darker forces to trick people into inviting them into you. So you don't want other beings getting in your body with you or getting even attached to you. We want non-attachment when it comes to entities or multidimensional beings. You want your sovereignty. It's very essential that you have your sovereignty to stay on these ascension timelines. And that means knowing what's you and knowing what's not you and not just taking the bait because it looks shiny and is sparkling and flashy and, and serves your ego, okay? So that being said, um, thank you so much for being here with me. When I look out at the collective, I am so amazed at the progress that we are making. We are crushing it together. And even though it looks kind of dark and heavy, things will lighten up. They really will. And remember that you are one of the timeline imprinters and what you do and feel and how you express has a big impact way more than you could imagine. So you do matter very, very much. You matter each and every one of you. And I appreciate all of the inner work that each of you is doing because you're making this world a better place and you're making it a beautiful place. And you're literally laying the foundation of the new earth reality. So thank you for everything that you're doing. And I will be back soon. Much love family.